not as loud, not as loud as the 124s. Oh, but they did have a crack. The Spear Elise, this is the law enforcement version of their ammunition, gold dot duty ammo. Part number 53614. The bullet weight's 115 grains. That's about 7.45 grams with a ballistic coefficient of 0 0.125. Bullet style is a GDHP. The test barrel length for some of the numbers I'm going to give you here was 4 inches. What should we expect in terms of velocity? So feet per second. At the muzzle, with this 4-inch barrel, we're looking at about 1,210 feet per second. At 25 feet, it drops to 1,133. When we get out to 100 feet, it's subsonic at 981. This ammo has a brass case with nickel plating, a copper jacketed hollow point bullet with a leg core, and a conical indentation in the hollow point end. Now, as I understand it, the whole theory behind the conical indentation is that the mouth of the hollow point opening is larger, so a larger portion or mass of material fits in there, and then as the bullet passes into the material, the conical shape it gets smaller and smaller, so it compresses the material, especially if we're talking about something like water that makes up a very large percentage of the body. Water doesn't compress, so therefore, instead of the water compressing, the bullet has to expand, so not just a cylindrical hole that's going to fill up with stuff and eventually expand, but rather that conical indentation in the front of the hollow point should, in theory, really make for some pretty rapid increase in those expansive pressures and forces inside the tip of that bullet as it passes into the target. Spear reports that the energy in foot-pounds at the muzzle is about 374, dropping to about 246 foot-pounds at 100 feet. If you sight your weapon at 25 feet, you should be dead on there. Bullet drop at 50 feet, 8 tenths of an inch. 75 feet, 3.5 inches of bullet drop. At 100 feet, Spear is predicting about 8.2 inches of drop. Spear has provided a variety of different data sets on their website from the FBI test protocol. So let's look first at bare gelatin. We expect a penetration of 11.75 inches with an expansion to 0.69 inches and a retained weight of 114.5. So that's a very high percentage of retained weight going into bare ballistic gel. When we look at the FBI test protocol for heavy clothing, their expectation here, 13.75 inches of penetration with an expansion to 0 0.590. So we lose a little bit of expansion versus the bare ballistic gel, but a retained weight of 114.9. So nearly the entire full weight is retained there. When shooting steel with the FBI protocol, penetration 22.45 expansion 0 0.380, retained weight 114.1. I gotta be honest with you, I need to go read the FBI test protocol. I'm not sure what to make of this. The penetration of 22.45, that number is a bit anomalous to me. They don't cite a unit. I'm assuming that as with the others, they're talking about inches, but this is one that's gonna take a little bit more research to make sense of. The sheetrock penetration test, or gypsum board, or wall board, whatever you wanna call it. Spear reports 10.95 inches of penetration with expansion to 0 0.620, still pretty robust expansion here, retained weight 115.0, so they're reporting a complete and total retained weight, and I've got to be honest with you, I I'm really anxious to get out and try this and see what we find, because a lead cord copper jacketed hollow point bullet retaining full weight when passing through any sort of barrier, that's kind of unusual. That's why we have hunting rounds like uh, what I use with 223. The Barnes TSX is a complete copper projectile because one of the big problems with your hybrid lead with a copper jacket projectile is in weight retention that it's easier for, for the projectile to fall apart as it passes through this barrier. So very interested to get out and validate some of these tests. To be honest with you, looking at the data off the Spear website that we see here, some of this looks a a little bit optimistic, so very anxious to get out in the field and see what we find. For plywood penetration, Spears reporting 13.7 with an expansion to 0 0.570, so a little bit more expansion than the steel, but still not in the range of what they're reporting for the gelatin, the clothing, or the wallboard, with again, complete uh, weight retention reported. 
And finally, the last data set Spear provides is that of safety glass with a penetration of 12.38, uh, similar to steel and, and wall board and plywood for, for that matter. Uh, I need to go read the protocol and understand what this means. My assumption would be that this is penetration into gel after passing through the barrier, but we're seeing penetration numbers reported that are in excess of what was reported for the bare gelatin itself, which frankly doesn't make sense. Some energy would have to be consumed in passing through the barrier, which would mean you know less penetration after the barrier. So really need to look into this, but expansion, 0 0.550, we have very little expansion. The image of the recovered bullet is mangled. It's irrecognizable where some of the earlier ones, you could see that nice kind of flower pattern expansion. Retained weight, 98.8. Finally, Spear reports some numbers that look at least vaguely realistic that this bullet is not going to hold together when hitting something like safety glass that is not easy to penetrate. So really anxious to get out in the field, do some tests like this ourselves and see what we find. Uh, one of us shot uh, 25, 30 rounds through the Lone Wolf Distributor's stainless steel threaded drop-in barrel. This is the 17TH for the Glock 17. This is a Gen 4 Glock 17, by the way. Seems to be working pretty well. So now we're going to switch to some function testing for this Spear LE. This is their law enforcement ammunition. The gold dot in 115 grain 9mm Luger. Here I got about 10 rounds in this mag. I'm going to see if I can get on target with the big gong this time see how the Spear Gold Dot rounds from Ammunition Supply Company work out. All right, clear. All right, new issues with cycling. You know, the other thing that I, that I failed to mention here, I got too many variables going on. I installed new sights. These are the True Glow H3 sights. They have the light tube in the top as well as the tritium down inside them. So in full light, uh, you get a lot of light coming in through the top and they're pretty bright. When it gets darker, the tritium goes through those little fiber optic tubes and gives you a pretty good view as well. Got to be fair to this ammo. I, I think it was about 10 shots. I hit the gong twice at uh, probably, what, 15 yards, 20 yards. I don't really consider that to be acceptable, shooting at an 8-inch gong, but uh, I haven't sighted in these new sights. They've been installed, and I haven't taken the gun out and shot it to sight them in yet. So we'll keep working on that, but the ammo fed really smoothly. Well, guys, uh, as always, we're thanking Ammunition Supply Company for providing the ammunition for us to do our shoots, uh, for testing uh, the products for different handguns. What I'm doing right now is I actually took three Winchester white box full metal jacket uh, bullets and three gold dot duty ammunition hollow points. So I'm going to try a burst of the six rounds uh, to see if we have any problems going from the full metal jacket to the hollow points and see how they feed through the gun probably taking aim over to the big gong over here, see how it works. Well, no issues. And uh, this is the SR9C from Ruger uh, with their 10 round capacity magazine. We've got some ballistic gel blocks on the way. When those get here, we'll show you how they expand. We've got some nice barrier penetration test coming up for this ammo, so stick around.